man full of courage with the hopes of victory a land that suffered sorrow in the days that has gone by but the Lord he remembers and he shall hear the cry Israel oh Israel the Lord is on your side Israel oh Israel you shall hear your cry to those that question Israel are you to shall answer with the shouts of victory nations are shaking as they wandering in their minds what shall we do with Israel at this appointed time but they don't know the story that comes from the days of old of Israel's enemy like a river it shall flow Israel oh Israel the Lord is on your side Israel oh Israel we shall hear your cry to those that question Israel are you truly shall answer with the shouts of victory the nations are shaking as they wandering in their minds what shall we do with Israel at this appointed time but they don't know the story that comes from the days of old that the blood of Israel's enemy like a river it shall flow Israel oh Israel the Lord is on your side Israel oh Israel we shall hear your cry let it be known that the Lord has prophesied His way, touch the apple of his eye, and those that touch his way, touch the apple of his eye. Dear saints, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ, both locally and abroad. We thank the Lord that we can have this opportunity once again to go into God's word and to spend some time worshipping and praising him. Let's bow for a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, dear God, that we have this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to come into your presence. You are the God that has watched over the lives of your children, my God, both locally and abroad, my Father. I pray, Lord, that you will minister unto them, my God, Lord, you see many, Lord, with situations, uh, with problems, my Father. You are the God that is able to minister to them, to touch them, to heal them, Lord, and deliver them from whatever the situation is, my God. Uh, our hearts go out, Lord, to them that are on the beds of affliction, my God, that need prayer, my Father. I cover them under the blood of Jesus Christ, my God. Uh, may you touch them, Lord, and may you raise them up from that bed of affliction, my God. Father, this morning we pray for the nation of Israel. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God that is guiding her. We know, dear Lord, that you have many things still in store for her. We commit, Lord, a governor's a leadership, my God. We pray that you preserve the young Lord and the innocent lives on both fronts, my God. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, we are thankful once again to be able uh, to go into God's word. Uh, I'm sure most of y'all across the lands 
uh, I've had a very eventful week, especially with the, what has been going on in the Middle East. And uh, we also realize there are many other issues uh, the children of God uh, are affected by. Yeah, in South Africa, we're expecting uh, uh, another wave of the coronavirus. Uh, uh, the infection rates are going higher. So uh, let's keep that in mind, and may we pray for the saints uh, locally and abroad uh, that God may preserve and protect his children. Last week, my brothers and sisters, uh, it was Mother's Day, but uh, we dealt with the the second half of the message uh, related to uh, the walls uh, uh, that God's eyes are continually on his walls of Jerusalem. Not realizing that uh, only the next few hours, my brothers and sisters, what was going to happen in Israel. Now, uh, most of you know what has been going on. We've been flagged down by Facebook. Uh, concerning uh, the content of our posts. So uh, I have to be guarded. Uh, you know, I'm not an individual that goes uh, by script uh, so much so. So there are times where uh, I may just forget about uh, the caution of Facebook, and I pray that uh, we may find another way to, if something happens, broadcast uh, our messages. Now, my brothers and sisters, I may not say and use the same uh, uh, weddings, I, I try to be as cautious as possible, but brothers and sisters, the word of God is the word of God. When we get into the word of God, uh, we will co quote what God's word says. That's the final authority. And uh, what my idea or my phraseology doesn't amount to too much. But nevertheless, uh, uh, there's much that I could put on here this morning. There's much I could say. But brothers and sisters, I want to be able to say a few points leading to this hour. We're entitling our message this morning, as we can see from this chart, Prelude to Israel's Miraculous Era. Now, we're looking at this word, prelude. My brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the, uh, the meaning of prelude is act actually action leading to something more important. Action leading to something more important. The world doesn't know what's the more important, but this is an introduction to Israel's miraculous hour. No, at the moment of time, we have not seen uh, God uh, move in his miraculous way as much as there's a few points that I want to talk about this morning that lets us know what this prelude is all about. It can be an introduction, a leading to, and my brothers and sisters, whether it be a few weeks or a short few months, uh, before they get into the more important thing that is contained in the word of God, uh, we will watch uh, and uh, look at the scenes as they unfold. And my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, from this picture we, we see, brothers and sisters, uh, the Iron Dome, and we see uh, the missiles being fired. Now, brothers and sisters, this is a very sophisticated uh, technology. I don't even have the ability to tell you exactly how it operates. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, in a simplistic form, uh, once a missile is fired, the Iron Dome uh, automatically is able to know uh, where its destination is. Uh, and uh, brothers and sisters, uh, actually uh, they meet and it's put out. And uh, if it feels that uh, it's a missile that's going to an area where brothers and sisters it's not going to cause much damage, uh, it probably will just let it go. And uh, we know that God has given the nation uh, this, I would say, uh, mind uh, because it knew down the road uh, it will require its protection. Now, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the nation of Israel, we know from past messages that we ministered, uh, Israel is God's fig tree. The Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in Matthew 24, 32, brothers and sisters, uh, he said, now learn a parable concerning the fig tree. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, we realize that God has a purpose uh, in talking about uh, 
Israel being God's fig tree, and you can go in Joel, and you can read how that fig tree was barked, and how the nation of Israel was scattered to the four corners of the earth. And in 1948, as she came back to be restored, so all of this is happening is still a process of restoration for the nation of Israel. My brothers and sisters, uh, in 1948, Matthew 24, 32, at a starting point, brothers and sisters, uh, now learn a parable about the fig tree. Brothers and sisters, uh, we now move to this point uh, past uh, 2017. This is 2021. And uh, we are just in front, brothers, this, of the miracle, miraculous war. What is happening now is just a prelude, uh, brothers and sisters, because uh, there are certain factors that have to be in place. Now it's like a puzzle. Brothers and sisters, few pieces uh, are being put into its place. And it's really very exciting, and uh, many times we, we, we want to be able to even jump the gun uh, to say, how oh, have we entered in that miraculous hour? But let's uh, go as God goes. So we have to understand, uh, brothers and sisters, this is an introduction. It's a prelude uh, to some more pieces uh, being put into the picture. Because uh, once you know the picture, God has given the bride of Jesus Christ uh, a picture. The religious world, and uh, we thank the Lord for all that they do. They, they do a lot of postings. Uh, and brothers and sisters, uh, which actually uh, invigorates our heart, uh, but they just uh, have a few uh, pieces of the picture. The bride of Jesus Christ has been given a completed picture. And until that completed picture is before us, then we can be able to say, well, now we see what God is doing as according to the scriptures. So uh, let's uh, be able to look at it in a wise way. We realize, brothers and sisters, in the midst of Israel uh, moving forward to this point, the church of the living God is also moving to a point. And my brothers and sisters, so we have to watch both fronts, uh, and uh, we know God has been restoring his church, uh, and God is getting uh, his nation uh, ready for what's in front of us. To go back, this is a picture of the soldiers at the Wailing Wall in 1967. These men were young soldiers at that time. But when they got to the spot, Moshe Dayan said, we've reached the most holiest spot of the nation of Israel. And they said, we will never return it again. Those three men that you see there, 50 years later, they are still alive. But brothers and sisters, it's a different picture altogether. When they fought, they fought with old tanks, brothers and sisters, outdated rifles. But today, this is what you are seeing. Now we have to see how time has progressed, how God has developed that army. But more than that, we realize the Bible talks about the great army which is when the supernatural aspect is added uh, to the technology and the soldiers of Israel. So what we are seeing, and we've seen some pictures of how the soldiers rejoice. Brothers and sisters, they have a spark uh, like no other army that I've seen. Uh, uh, and, and it's like a lion spirit that is inside of them, uh, that they just want to go after their enemies. But I believe, brothers and sisters, this is a little foretaste uh, of what we're going to see, but it is going to be, uh, you'll have to multiply that many times when the miraculous is added to it and when angels take control of the atmosphere, brothers and sisters, it's another round altogether. Now, I have to say, our hearts go out to the innocent on both sides. Nobody wants to see lives lost. Nobody wants to see little children, brothers and sisters, uh, being hurt and maimed because uh, we are humans. But nonetheless, we have to realize God has given this world uh, a space of time and said, take a good look at my nation and see what they suffered 
see what they went through. Now I've given them a portion of ground, and that's my land. And to whoever I give it, that's my blessing. And my brothers and sisters, so the world has to take knowledge. And you know, all across the world this morning, there are protests. Now it's going to get louder and louder. We know there are certain things in the scriptures that we will talk in a moment of time. And uh, just as we see the prelude, we have to understand these are the moments that God is giving the world an opportunity. Please, move back. Just like he told to Pharaoh. They didn't know what God is going to do. They just saw uh, children, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, old people standing at the Red Sea. But Pharaoh didn't know that God was going to open the Red Sea. And when he does that, brothers and sisters, <laughs> then we realize Pharaoh's army starts to get drowned. So, as we look at this, we realize it's a different hour altogether from what those three men experienced in 1967. Brothers and sisters, uh, no doubt, they were young youths at that time. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is a picture in 2017, so 50 years later, as such from 67, I, I wonder, brothers and sisters, what is in their minds, or if some of them are alive today. But nonetheless, brothers and sisters, they are watching a different scene altogether. And uh, therefore, we said last week, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not extend Jerusalem above my chief joy. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, last week, uh, 10 days ago, Jerusalem was, was quiet as such. Brothers and sisters, uh, the uh, mosque of Omar was quiet, but on the 6th of May, something started to happen. Because, my brothers and sisters, we have to realize this nation from a valley of dry bones <laughs> is moving to an army, but brothers and sisters, uh, God's army is also getting ready to attach itself to this army. Brothers and sisters, so we are now in 2021, in front of us, uh, brothers and sisters, we're going to see uh, what's going to be when the great army of God attaches itself. It's not that God is not doing certain things at this moment and giving wisdom and God is in control of all of this. We thank the Lord, at, at least at this moment, uh, uh, President Biden, brothers and sisters, has been supportive of, of what's going on uh, with the Israel defending itself. Brothers and sisters, but how far that will go, we'll just watch and see that. But brothers and sisters, uh, somehow something in my mind begins to, to, to look at things that down the road, uh, Israel uh, will have to remove the yoke that has been placed upon her. Because my brothers and sisters, in order for Michael to be on its side, Michael is not going to take any glory, or God's not going to take any glory of any man-made uh, uh, leadership as such. So uh, we thank God for this moment of time uh, that Israel has got uh, the hand uh, uh, of the United States of America in a certain way. But brothers and sisters, uh, as we follow this, we will realize that may not be always uh, the way it will be. Now, my brothers and sisters, sir, uh, to show you how God works circumstances, as we see from this picture, brothers and sisters, uh, this is uh, leading up, brothers and sisters, uh, on uh, the Temple Mount. Brothers and sisters, uh, in the government of Israel, on the 5th and 6th, you can go back and Google and read, Bennett and uh, the mandate was given to Lepid, brothers and sisters, they were preparing to sign agreements for a unity government which would seat, brothers and sisters, uh, I would have to say individuals there that will push us back in time in relation to the way the scriptures are written. Because if you got a lukewarm uh, brothers leftist uh, mixed up uh, 
government as such. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says uh, the governors of Judah are going to be like a torch of fire. That's the end picture when uh, brothers and sisters, uh, the, uh, the miraculous hour comes into being. So God worked a condition because my brothers and sisters, nobody knew that just there in East Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, uh, there was, uh, I think it's a place called Sheikh uh, Jaffa, uh, brothers and sisters, where we see that uh, there were buildings that belonged to Jewish people. And there was much contention in that. And my brothers and sisters, uh, there were legal, uh, I would say, documents in the making uh, to be able to move uh, some of the people out of these buildings. And that, brothers and sisters, uh, started out a condition that has built up to this point. Because that's where the starting point really was. And my brothers and sisters, from there, it went on to the Mosque of Omar. But at that hour, before these uh, individuals could sign those agreements for such a government, God uh, knew that's the way it is not going to go. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, hours after that, they stated, we cannot sign these agreements. And my brothers and sisters, Netanyahu was put back in the driving seat. And you know how he has performed over the past 10 days. And Bennett, brothers and sisters, uh, has joined forces with him and said, we're not going to go with that kind of a government. We'll yet see in front of us uh, how that plays out. But brothers and sisters, uh, you and I know for the past 12 years, uh, Netanyahu was used of God uh, to lead uh, the front line, uh, brothers and sisters, and brought the nation of Israel where it is today. And look at how she, he spoke last night, brothers and sisters. So I cannot put much here for reasons you know. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, the first point is for you to understand why this situation started. Because God knew that if he let it go, we're going to have a Jewish government that is going contrary to the word of God. So, brothers and sisters, that has started. We've, we've talked many times about, and Brother Jackson has talked about, uh, the cup of trembling. And we know, brothers and sisters, it is the nervous state that is uh, amongst the, the nations uh, around uh, Jerusalem, the countries. <coughs> and brothers and sisters, uh, it's actually what is going on at the present moment, the nervousness that is there in Jerusalem. And my brothers and sisters, we realize uh, there are many other pictures that we can put, but we can't put too much. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, these are how the situation is going on uh, there. Brothers and sisters, even at this moment uh, in Jerusalem and in Israel. So it is producing that cup of trembling. Uh, it's been going on for some time, but we are giving that updated picture now. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, we'll ask the question. In Zechariah chapter 12 and verses 2, it says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. And my brothers and sisters, the reason we have stated this is a prelude leading to something more important, which is the era of the miraculous, is because in this chapter 12, there is seven times that God uses the word all, A-L-L. -L. Now, brothers and sisters, when you use the word a few, or single, or all, I'm sure we can see the distinction why God stated it that way. To give us a key when uh, this era of the superna supernatural will really go into its uh, end picture or climax. So we see here uh, that in order, brothers and sisters, uh, for this cup of trembling to reach its boiling point, all the players of the nations around Jerusalem, brothers and sisters like Syria, 
like Lebanon, like Iraq, like brothers and sisters, uh, I would have to say uh, the people in Gaza, as well as we realize that Iran, brothers and sisters, uh, is actually a nation that's going to be the one in Ezekiel 38 and 39. But she has got a tentacles out to all these nations that are around Jerusalem. So we can take heart and see this key word. It says, uh, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, round about Jerusalem. And my brothers and sisters, that is Lebanon, Syria, Gaza, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, and some of the places uh, even uh, in Saudi Arabia and all of those areas out there. So uh, we had a map here, we could, could show it to you. So it says, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and Jerusalem. So we see, brothers, the momentum gaining ground as the protests are in the world and a lot of nations. But God has a word in his mind when he says all, it's all. And God knows, brothers and sisters, what that all stands for. But we get excited, we cannot help but get excited as we see this picture and this prelude moving into it. But don't forget this word all, it's important. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone. Again, the word for all people. Not single, not a few, but all people. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is talking about the United Nations. This is uh, the diplomatic uh, efforts that they will be putting forth. Now, they wanted to have meetings through this week, even on Friday, Saturday, but it's because the United States of America said no, Israel has a right to defend itself. They said no, we can't wait till next week, uh, Monday or, or Tuesday, uh, let's have one on Sunday. So that word all is gaining momentum. It will reach a point when basically the world, diplomatically, basically it's going to be uh, more than 90% uh, are going to be uh, in a frustrated state. Uh, sense. Therefore, when it says uh, Jerusalem will become a burdensome stone for all, what is the burdensome stone? It is a frustration. They are now all saying the world must do something about this. It's taking our peace away. We can't go on like this forever and ever. So this has to reach boiling point. Brothers and sisters, because it says uh, for all people. Again the word, the third time, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. So the end picture is God's going to deal with it. It's not that we should have sleepless nights. Uh, God's going to deal with it. But that doesn't mean uh, you just throw a scripture there and say, well, you know, forget about it. You have to see how this prelude builds uh, to that picture of ALL because uh, when it reaches that point, uh, brothers, it's like a, a fire starting in a house. You see smoke. Then you smell smoke, then you, you see a little flames. Finally, you see the building collapsing. It is a, a complete devastation. So we have to see, uh, as uh, this word all is used to all that burden themselves with it. Brothers, this is not the world's matter. God has already stated in the scriptures what he wants to do. And, uh, but it is going to lead to frustration from government to government, and they will hand over this heavy stone to one another. And my brothers and sisters, uh, God says, I will cut them in pieces, though, though all, though all the world, all the people of the earth be gathered together against him. The fourth time of the word all. So you cannot say that now you are in the climax of the era of the miraculous as such, till the word all reaches a certain climatic point. Because the word all is a key word that you have to look at. It's building to that point. And so we realize all these flags, or maybe most of them, brothers and sisters, when they start throwing their vote against the nation of Israel, that word all will start reaching its climatic point. And my brothers and sisters, uh, 
They sit there. They tr brothers and sisters, they wanted her to have meetings upon meetings. They've had short meetings. But brothers and sisters, because they are frustrated, they don't know what to do with the situation. They have had the COVID situation, but what are they going to do with this situation? My brothers and sisters, Jerusalem is going to become that burdensome stone. What has gone on over the past two years with the COVID and see what's going on in India and brothers, what's going to happen even we don't know down in our own country, brothers and sisters, but this is a bigger problem if the world goes at it the way they are going at this moment and reach that all point. And so brothers and sisters, we have to realize that this stone is not a small stone, it is a heavy stone. It's going to deal with all the nations of the world as such. In that United Nations of America, it's going to be frustrating. How are we going to deal with this? And my brothers and sisters, uh, to show you that the scene has changed from what it was just in 48 or 67 or 82 or 83, 91, 2000, when the inf inf Intifada started, brothers and sisters, to 2021. They are sitting today to deal with the situation as well. The Bible says, And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. This word, the Lord of hosts, is important because God is the head of the armies of the, of the heavens. Now, my brothers and sisters, I said earlier on, the governors of Israel on the 5th and 6th of brothers and sisters May were going to make a decision that would go contrary to what this is stated here. Because, brothers and sisters, they were going to have MKs in that government, the brothers and sisters uh, will want their peace, brothers and sisters, uh, of uh, the cake as such. And uh, God's word tells us a different picture. That is why I said something happened in East Jerusalem that brothers and sisters turned this picture all around. That when Netanyahu was pushed out of the picture, is brought back into the picture. How long is going to remain there? That's yet to be seen. But I would have to say, he has taken over the past 10 days the leadership and led Israel forward. And my brothers and sisters uh, that had made uh, Bennett and other individuals, they're realizing we cannot allow something like this to happen. Now, my brothers and sisters, the interpretation of this scripture is that when the governors or the leadership of Israel, it says, shall say in their heart, they're not telling to the world. They are saying, you know what? We cannot allow East and West Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, uh, to be populated. And I've got to be wise how I say this because I realize uh, uh, we governed. Brothers and sisters, to have... Uh, Brothers and sisters, uh, just uh, a Jewish population. Brothers and or, or, or just a mixed population in uh, Jerusalem. But the scripture says, when they will say, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, it is the inhabitants of how it was in the olden time. Brothers and sisters, in the olden time, David was the king of Jerusalem. And his relatives and his cousins and all of them of Jewish origin, brothers and sisters, inhabited Jerusalem. That history will back it up. And my brothers and sisters, uh, until the governors start to think, just as David thought, to fulfill the remaining scriptures here, this cup of trembling is going to go on. Now, my brothers and sisters, to show you God realized that the governors were not thinking right, he allowed this little situation that started off 
in East Jerusalem to build, to build, to where it is now, that brothers and sisters, the situation uh, is in a turmoil. Now my brothers and sisters, beyond that point, we have to understand that brothers and sisters, Israel has fought with the enemies of hers. But brothers and sisters, something new has started to take place in Israel. Brothers and sisters, what the world or people call a mob uh, protest, but brothers and sisters, the Palestinians, together with uh, the Jews, in Haifa, brothers and sisters uh, and other major towns in Israel, they were coexisting together. They had shops next to one another, and my brothers and sisters, uh, they uh, sat in the restaurants. Uh, most of the problems were down there in Gaza. But what happened? Brothers and sisters, on the 6th of May, moving forward, suddenly another spirit was transmitted into Israel, which was unseen. That brothers and sisters, uh, what was happening in the United States of America in the past couple of months, started to happen in Israel and this caught Israel by surprise to a certain extent because they don't know how to quell this. And my brothers and sisters when we pondered on these scriptures in the past we realized how is this going to ever happen? Well brothers and sisters uh, you will have war, you will have turmoil if you're going to start uh, separating and segregating for just, uh, I would say, uh, different types of people. But when a nation gets to a point when brothers and sisters, individuals start to open fire on the citizenship of the nation of Israel, then that will start to give Israel the right to fulfill the scriptures that I've read. So you have to see how this situation in Israel had to reach this point because without which you cannot just take uh, whichever race it can be, brothers and sisters living in harmony, just take them and just do what you want to do with them. Brothers and sisters, but when it becomes problematic, when there's unrest and lives are being lost and there's violence, then the governors have to start thinking what is the solution. And that is why a long time ago, God wrote in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to be your strength until you start thinking how I am thinking. And my brothers and sisters, God knew how David thought and God knew what is going to be in Jerusalem when the supernatural is going to be acted and enacted. Brothers and sisters, therefore, these are keys as you look to what is there happening now. Therefore, we are seeing the preload, but we are moving forward when this picture is going to be cleared. So, therefore, I firmly believe God never ever wanted brothers and sisters a mixed type uh, leadership uh, because that is not the word of God and that is not what the word of God says. Uh, the Bible says, uh, a governor's uh, will be together. And it tells us how a governess will think. So it's wonderful to see how this scripture, more light comes into it with what is now presently. That is why I have to say, the religious world and the denominational world and a lot of individuals, well, they, 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 they just got a, a blinker in their mind. They do not see. And what they are saying now, we want peace, we want tranquility, let's go back. But they don't see what God's picture and what he has in the word of God. So brothers and sisters, that's a point that's important. So, the 5th and 6th of May, these two men were getting ready to have a unified government mixed with brothers and sisters, other individuals that were not of Jewish origin. This man who led the nation of Israel for the past 12 odd years was being pushed in the background and my brothers and sisters one would have thought how would this play out but God created a condition 
Brothers and sisters, today, this man has now linked himself to this man that has led. Brothers and sisters, Bennett has said he will not go with that type of a government. And we will see what happens down the road. Brothers and sisters, so, it says in that day, will I make the governors of Judah like an earth of fire amongst the wood, and like a torch of fire in the midst of sheaves. Brothers and sisters, uh, does that tell you uh, that there is going to be a leadership uh, that is like jellyfish, uh, wanting everything to go whichever way it wants to go? Brothers and sisters, it says the leadership of Judah shall be <coughs> like an earth of fire amongst wood, and like a torch of fire in the sheaf. They will burn everything. And they shall devour all, the word all again. Now, I, I want you to see, what does the word all mean? They shall devour all the people. Does that mean they're going to devour the Jewish people? You know better than that. They shall devour all the people round about. On the right hand and on the left hand. That lets me know they would have to have reason why they do that. And the reason is now being shown on your television screens. Because Israel has got to contain not just uh, what the world is saying, mob violence. Uh, it is citizen upon citizen. And my brothers and sisters, uh, no nation can allow that to happen. And that is why we are seeing the prelude of it. It's moving to the point when these governors will say, if Israel is going to have peace, then they shall devour all the people round about on, that's not Jewish people, round about on the right and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again, just as it was in the days of David, in her own place, even in Jerusalem. No, uh, we don't have to take a placard and say, brothers and sisters, I do this, I do that, and get it in, in the political arena. Brothers and sisters, this is going to happen when the attitude and the mindset of the leadership is changed. And I want to say in the same breath, that is the same way with the ministry in this third watch. Brothers and sisters, when they see the reason why all fallacy, erroneous doctrines, uh, ideas of men uh, will have to go aside, and only what is truth will have to stand, then my brothers, they are going to do the same thing that this leadership has done. Therefore, you have to see how God is moving the church of the living God. We've seen the prelude uh, to Isaiah 52 8, but we're going to see one of these days uh, when God puts that ministry into action. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, they will act just as God's early leadership acted. Therefore, you have to realize how we're moving in time uh, and how God will anoint just like He anointed Joshua and anointed Moses and anointed uh, David. He will anoint the end time ministry as well as brothers and sisters the leadership of the governors uh, of Jerusalem and Judah so we have to see how important for us to understand uh, that when the word of God uses the word all you have to open that word all round about so this that has started off there on the 6th of May and 5th of May because of a building uh, brothers and sisters, that was rented uh, by other individuals was a condition that God used to say, leadership, look at what's down the road. Because you're going to be set to devour. This word devour is not a small word you use. All the people round about, on the right hand and on the left hand, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again. Inhabited with who? Brothers and sisters, you know that David had his eyes set, brothers and sisters, on royalty. That is why I don't know the man Pollard that we, we put posted, but to me he looks more than an ordinary citizen. He may be of Davidic origin, I don't know. But brothers and sisters, remember what the scripture says, that brothers and sisters, uh, that in the finality, the people on this Temple Mount will be of the royal lineage. 
Brothers and sisters, uh, it's a type of when Christ is going to come, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Brothers and sisters, uh, that there will have to be this situation turned around. And it has given, or it will give insight to these governors, we have to change our plans. On that day, that's another translation, I will make the clans of Judah like a flame that is set on a wood pile, a blaze, or like a burning torch among sheaves of grain. They will burn all the neighboring nations, right and left, while the people living in Jerusalem remain secure. Brothers and sisters, therefore, we use the word prelude because as you move down the road into the era of the miraculous, these scriptures are going to become predominant. Now in Zechariah chapter 10, uh, and moving forward, we'll have to go a little fast. We see the word of God says, Ask K of the Lord, rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. God doesn't write his word in chronological order. This chapter opens with what God is going to do after Israel is restored and the two prophets come on the scene. And to, why? To make the religious world and people who just want to place, misplace scripture say, well, we don't understand the picture. But children of God know, brothers, there is coming the early and latter rain for the Jewish nation in front of us. But it goes back now in time and says, mine anger was kindled against the shepherds and I punished the goats for the Lord of hosts had visited his flock the house of Judah, and had made them as his goodly os in battle. From 67, God has been doing that even slightly in 1948. But it was the house of Judah. Out of him came, fought the corner. That is the beginning point. That's the tribe of Judah. Out of him the nail. Uh, brothers and sisters, you cannot move Israel out of where she is now. Out of him the battle bow. Look at the battle bow, the military might. From outdated tanks and rifles to what she did in 1967 to today. Look at the technology. It's mind-boggling. Brothers and sisters, look at how those buildings came down in Gaza. Again I say, our hearts go out to the innocent lives, brothers and sisters and children. But Israel has been so careful they can slice it like with a razor and take a building out. And the least amount brothers and sisters, of death to civilian life. But this is what is going to be in front of us. As they shall be mighty men which tread down the enemies in the mire of the streets, in the battle, and they shall fight because the Lord is with them, and the riders of horses shall be confounded. Now my brothers and sisters, we dealt with why the governors of Judah will have to change their attitude. And there has to be a corrected leadership. And they would have to be given reason why they change their attitude because the world is going to clamp down on them. The reason you can say President Biden has looked at this this way, you can see, well, Israel does have a right because brothers and sisters, innocent Jewish lives are being lost. But brothers and sisters, what happened in the streets of Tel Aviv and Haifa and elsewhere were citizens upon citizens. Anyone can tell you from where this was imported, from where that spirit came. It caught the leadership of Israel by surprise to a certain extent. And that is why this is going on. But the world doesn't know it's giving reason to the leadership of Israel. Secondly, when Israel starts to move militarily, brothers and sisters, it's a prelude to see how God works with the, leadership, the military might of the leadership of Israel. We'll turn to Joshua. Brothers, we don't have the time. It will be good for you to go and read jo the chapter of Joshua 2, moving on. But I want to go to chapter 8.
brothers and sisters, uh, Joshua has gone into the land and God has told Joshua, go and take the city of Ai or Ai. Brothers and sisters, and so he sent spies in there. And the spies went there to the city of Ai. And brothers and sisters, uh, they said, you know what, Joshua, we don't have to send the whole army of Israel. Just send about 3,000. We are able to empower and take them over. Brothers and sisters, remember, the miraculous and the supernatural is not dependent when man thinks we can overpower somebody. It is when God is the one in leadership. Now, brothers and sisters, a major mistake was made here because there was problems in the camps of Israel. And so the Jewish small army went, and brothers and sisters, 36 of their men were killed. And the, the city of Ai, or I, brothers and sisters, uh, chased the army of Israel. And Israel, the Bible says, uh, their hearts melted like water. We have had the walls of Jericho come down. We defeated everybody. What had happened suddenly? It's because, brothers and sisters, they didn't consult and depend on God. And there was sin in the camp. And my brothers and sisters, but when we go later, when that was rectified, we see God coming on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, in chapter 8, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, and go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and a king, as thou didst unto Jericho and a, a king. Only thou shalt spoil them, and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay there an ambush for the city behind it. See, brothers, when God deals, he doesn't just say go there and fight in your own strength. He gives them wisdom like a wizard. That's how you see the word God says, lay there an ambush. Brothers and sisters, Moshe Dayan, in 1967, he stated, he used, brothers and sisters, uh, the policy of Joshua and their military generals. You know, brothers and sisters, NASA, the president of NASA of Egypt, they wanted to devastate Israel in 1967. And they were ready, brothers, with all its planes. And my <coughs> brothers and sisters, the leadership of Israel said, we will not fight directly and dogfight Egypt. We will go in a way roundabout, fly over other countries, refuel, and come behind Egypt. In the meanwhile, when Egypt said the planes of Israel has taken off, they said we have to take off and fight them, but they didn't know the plains of Israel were nowhere to, nowhere to be seen. They had taken a roundabout trip because they knew when the plains of Egypt comes to Israel, they will bomb all the airfields in Egypt because there's no planes there. And when these planes come back to look where the plains of Egypt, uh, Israel is, they cannot land. They're running out of fuel. And you know what? Israel took pot shots of the planes. And Israel got air supremacy. And that was the first starting point to destroy, and brothers and sisters, the army of Israel. Now, in this what we are seeing played out now, brothers and sisters, it was either Thursday, Friday, I don't remember, but brothers and sisters, Israel started to work a plan. And it was a plan, no doubt, that God gave inspiration by. And my brothers and sisters, they started to say to the world as the evening lights began to fall, tanks upon tanks began to gather and set themselves at the doorstep of Gaza. 
And my brothers and sisters, sir, all the leadership of a mass, they have what they call, brothers and sisters, sir, a metro underground city. Brothers and sisters, I've looked into that in the past, and you will, it's unbelievable, unbelievable what is under Gaza. There are shopping centers, brothers, there are uh, tunnels, brothers and sisters, uh, crisscrossing that you'll never think about. And my brothers, that they can live underground for, for months upon months. Israel knew all about this. And my brothers and sisters, it is just not one or two roads. And so, later in the evening, brothers and sisters, they stated that the army of Israel has now moved air tanks to move into Gaza. And my brothers and sisters uh, will be moving into Gaza during the night, or moving into Gaza. And my brothers and sisters, what happened? The news stations across the world, brothers and sisters in America and all other places, they began to broadcast that the military might of Israel is now moving in ground forces into Gaza. Brothers and sisters, Israel was parked at the border. She had no intentions to go, but she used, brothers and sisters, the same policy. Because if you read the story, you'll, you'll see how beautiful it is. Brothers and sisters, in Joshua's account, God told Joshua, you go into the valley and uh, you take a few of your soldiers there. And you make as if you're in the valley. And when the army of AI sees you there, all the soldiers are going to come out. And they're going to run into the valley and you move on. And, but you send your main soldiers behind the city, and when this army comes out, you enter the city and you burn it. Simple. Brothers and sisters, imagine when Hamas heard this, men, brothers and sisters, moved into the underground tunnels, and brothers and sisters, they said that we will be safe there, and Israel sent 150 jets in 40 minutes dropped 40 tons of bombs on the entrance points of these tunnels and sealed that underground metro city. Now tell me, brothers and sisters, if that is of man or it is of God inspiring a people. Without major casualties but locking up major part of the military might of Gaza set these individuals back. Therefore, I have to say, that is only a prelude of what is going to be seen. The world hasn't seen. Nobody knows what's under the ground. Brothers and sisters, and well, you say, well, brother, how do you feel about this? Remember, war is war. Brothers and sisters, God gave the idea to Joshua there. Brothers and sisters, imagine when all the soldiers are out and running after Joshua, the soldiers of Israel goes into the city and the word of God says plunder everything besides the cattle and things like that. Now brothers and sisters in front of us, the world is yet to see what is going to take place because Isaiah 63 tells us of a picture that brothers and sisters, the types, the Lord himself coming out of Bozrah, out of Edom. That is why I said, when you look at this, every actor has got to be in its place. Jordan hasn't entered in the picture as yet. Syria hasn't. Lebanon hasn't. They've just threw a few bombs. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God is going to inspire. That is why when the normal army of Israel is there, Michael, it's the same God that gave Joshua, remember who was in the leadership of Joshua, the information, this is the ambush, this is the way you do it. And my brothers and sisters, that is why we can thank the Lord that at this moment of time, we have seen two points, which is important. Number one, if the wrong leadership got in there, 
we would be set back a little while to see how these scriptures are going to go forward. But brothers and sisters, if the era of the miraculous is in front of us shortly, then the first thing that has to be done is the leadership has to be set right. And the leadership is scared or was scared, the past leadership. How are we going to deal with this situation? But God worked the condition where now they will say, we cannot allow these citizens of whichever rank and order to fight amongst themselves. We're not going to allow what have happened in other nations. And my brothers and sisters, therefore, in Isaiah 49, what I read, them that destroyed thee shall be far away. Twice it tells us that. And my brothers, further in the scriptures, he tells us, maybe I'll just read the scripture and we'll try and bring it to a close in Zechariah chapter 12. Verses 7. And the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's what he's been doing. And my brothers and sisters, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Who is that? The royal house of Judah. King David's lineage. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be at David. As David. When? When we move from the prelude into the era of the miraculous, the weakest man in, De in, in Jerusalem is going to be in a strength rise, is going to be just like David. The world has never seen that picture. They forgot about this picture. And what we've seen even with this is just the preliminaries. Of what it's going to be because the supernatural element is going to come into fall as never been seen. And my brothers and sisters, when you think about ambush, <laughs> what we see this, in, it's in a certain extent, brothers, it is like, you know, uh, a cartoon picture that, that has taken place and the world uh, doesn't know what happened. But it already happened a long time ago. And as I said, it's good for you to go and read the, the other chapters. You know, Joshua, when he saw that brothers and sisters, uh, all these nations are coming, the Lord anointed him and said, Son, stand where you are. Moon, stand in your place. I need time to deal with all of this. What is that? Brothers and sisters, God uh, stopping the celestial bodies of the world. Brothers and sisters, the era of the miraculous is going to be such a stupendous order of things that it will have to come out. Where the world, even if they don't want to say, they'll say we have seen something of an order that we've never seen before. Brothers, we've seen the technology. We see it's God has blessed this nation to this point. It amazes our mind. It's mind-boggling. But it's the preliminaries. It's the introduction of what God is going to do just in front of us. I don't know whether it's going to be months or a short six months or a year. We leave that in the hands of God. But brothers and sisters, this will have to be a picture that we will have to see. God's supernatural act. Michael is not coming down. Brothers and sisters, just to show you what an iron dome can do. It is great, it's fantastic. But the world will never ever equate that to the supernatural. My brothers and sisters, God is going to do some things that is going to shake that Middle East as it never was before. But we have to look at those words. All is not a few, just one nation coming or just uh, Hamas coming against Israel. The other actors have to come into play. Syria, 
Jordan, which is Edom. Brothers and sisters, parts of, I would say, Iraq, and maybe certain areas of Saudi Arabia and other little Arab nations around there. Brothers and sisters, and when Israel is going to be surrounded, we have to realize those governors would be in the right frame of mind. They will have to start devouring on the right and the left. The word of God tells us Egypt shall become like a woman. Judah shall be a terror to Egypt. And my brothers and sisters, Israel will extend a boundary line to the river of Euphrates. It will go in road, uh, road some places in Syria. Brothers and sisters, uh, Jordan will have to come under control brothers and sisters of Israel not that it'll take all of its property as such but we know parts of Jordan belongs to the nation of Israel and my brothers and sisters we also know Lebanon South Lebanon that is where brothers and sisters the fair trees are gonna come the wood uh, to beautify the temple brothers and sisters uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ all of this is in front of us what a joy it is to see. Brothers and sisters, how God, if he sees something is not going the way it's supposed to go, according to his scripture, then my brothers and sisters, remember, his God is supernatural forces that we've talked many times in Zechariah, brothers and sisters, chapter 1. And we see, as these carpenters, they are supernatural forces that deals with situations in the Middle East. Brothers and sisters, therefore we are a thankful people living at this hour. And when I saw, brothers and sisters, how this present leadership that was supposed to go another way had to change cause. Brothers and sisters, it's amazing how the scriptures become so clear for this hour of time. So I'm thankful to the Lord. No, the religious world will go on and it's wonderful. They will set all the postings and do all those things. But do they have a picture to see the key words? Why does it say all? Why does it say, and them that destroyed Israel shall be far away and the governor shall be an earth of fire and shall devour on the right and the left and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again. Brothers, if they do it today, you can be rest assured, there will be no more Israel as such. But when the citizenry of Israel, the citizenship of Israel, brothers and sisters, are against one another's throat, and they lived, be it Arab, or be it Jew, have the shops in Tel Aviv, in Haifa, they themselves said, we don't know what happened. A spirit has come. Brothers and sisters, it's to change the thinking of the leadership. Whether Netanyahu is still going to be there, who the men are, the Bible shows you what's going to be down. And I'm thankful to God. In the same light, God is going to have an end time leadership of men they're not going to be individuals that will play all sides, every side. And my brothers, you don't know where they stand. They will say like Brother Jackson, this I believe. What do you believe? Brothers and sisters, you can't just continue saying, well, we, 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 we got all this now. And when you read those contenders, brothers and sisters there, and you see the, the yardstick that Brother Jackson used there, brothers and sisters, you have to find out in your mind, what is the end time yardstick. What is the yardstick for today? What is the present yardstick? That is not, that's not fitting, you know. It was good for that hour. And my brothers, it wasn't fallacy or oh, Brother Jackson was bringing a wrong revelation. It was enough information for that hour. But for today, we know that two days is in reference to the church age's timeline. And my brothers and sisters, whichever point you want to start, it gives us an approximate time, whether it's 56, 57, 58, measure 2,000 prophetic years, it will make us understand we don't have decades upon decades upon decades. And therefore, 
what we are seeing happening should rejoice our heart and make us thank the Lord. Lord, you will defend Israel and move her forward. May the Lord bless each one of you this morning. And may we keep our eyes in the scriptures and on the nation of Israel and on our lives as well. Amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to live at this hour. Lord, to see how the world is moving, to see your scriptures adding on to the picture. Lord, I pray that you will guide us, lead us, help us to be a wise people living at this hour of time. Take these words, Lord, and you had to it the clarity of the picture. Bless your people, guide us, and lead us at this hour of time. We come at all things to you now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you this morning. Amen. Which men can be saved? There is no other name under heaven. There is rest for my soul, and the wounded made whole, and the captive set free and forgiven. There is no other name by which men can be there is no other name under heaven And there is rest for my soul And the wounded made whole And the captive set free and forgiven Such love as I've never And the captives in free.